What's going on, guys? Welcome to Looking Ahead to Beto Days. I am Chris. And I'm Ryan. And I'm Bernie and, Sanders. Uh, <laughs> Dan, and we have a special guest today. <laughs> Dan, Dan's, uh, Dan's going to sit in on the whole thing, and he sounds like George Costanza's dad. Fest of this is coming. The grievances are going to be Ed. Sorry, guys. My voice is shot. I don't know what happened, but I'll, I'm going to barrel through this. Important, <laughs> important shit's happening. He just wants to bring us some Medicare for all. That's I do. That's all. <laughs> yeah, just, I wrote the damn just bill. tax the wealthy. <laughs> damn bill wrote by me. You know, Joe Joe must have been high when he wrote that bill. Oh, wait. Wrong, wrong person. Wrong person. Yeah. Wrong, wrong person. person. <laughs> wrong person. It's not a funny No, j- just yell a lot, and I think you have it right. <laughs> can, can, I, can I combine Chip Jordan and Bernie Sanders? Is that possible? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never, ever again hear Jim Jordan joke in this podcast. I apologize for that one. Uh, Jim jo- Jim Jordan is the joke. I yes, say, that's exactly. Right. And I mean J-Y-M, Jim, not J-I-M. You get, you get it. Yeah, right. Get it. So let's jump right into the debate that is... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Substantially got, decent. It's always the same it's thing. The sa- it's the top three doing their thing, you know, and everybody below them were just fighting each other. Yeah, know? yeah. And, you know... Um, Kamala had the uh, the good moment with Tulsi, but I mean, I feel like mm-hmm. Tulsi is kind of an easy target at this this point. Yeah. Um, Hannah is not on the show. She did pass on the message that it's all pointless and stupid. Um, <laughs> it, it doesn't do anything, <laughs> which yeah. is pretty much consistent with everything she said every time she's been on here. Oh, she's consistent. You like it? Yeah, yeah. I think. I mean, I think there were you know a few people had some moments. Uh, you know, come on. Camilla had some moments. Uh, Corey had a few moments. And, you know, I think Amy has been surprising me. She's been pretty solidly consistent. And once you get past her stage presence, like she has horrible stage presence. But yeah, once she's you, shaky. <laughs> yeah, but once you get past that, um, she's really smart and kind of funny, actually. It, it's fun. like she had that line about she raised $17,000 from her ex boyfriends. That was pretty good. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> that too. was good. That was pretty funny. <laughs> That one was pretty funny. I like Amy. She's got character. I know. Yeah. I, I all the stuff came out that she wasn't very nice to um, the people who work for her. But when I mean, like every bit, everybody's a dick sometimes, right? Like we all have our moments. Yeah, yeah. no big deal. People, are, people are people. But I like. I, I genuinely like her. I, I liked her early on. Um, I liked Kamala. Um, I just. <sighs> Tom Steyer being on the stage irritates me more than any one thing on the history of and in, in the history of ever. <sighs> also, have you guys noticed that he does not blink when he talks? So full, I full disclosure, I actually pulled a pre JFK Nixon and listened to it on a podcast. Um, so I didn't really, <laughs> I didn't see the uh, the happenings, but I repeat my Tom Steyer line that he should be giving money to the DNC, to Dan Bell races, and to other candidates, not to his own campaign. Exactly. exactly. And, and yeah. Bloomberg too. Bloomberg can you know, t- uh, take his ass back to New York City. Yeah, he was just the, here. This is one like, of those things like I at least respect Bloomberg a little bit more because guess, yeah, he actually so. ran for office. That's true. You know, if Steyer really wants to – it feels the need for public service, go be governor. That's you know, go be – like do something like that. Don't what, – what, jump it straight into the president. You got to earn your way there. You can't just yeah. jump straight yeah. in there. His ideas aren't like the worst. He's not like up there just because he's rich, but – you're right. He needs to, you know, lick his, get his chops, you know, get his feet wet, you know, take some mm-hmm. hits and do it the right way. Not like Trump, yeah. who just did it based on hate and paranoia. And shit he made up at, on the fly. And, and I, I like how you both skimmed over the fact that I pointed out that Tim Tom Steyer does not blink. I, 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 I shit you not. I counted. I have like, not noticed that. I, it drives me fucking nuts. Like, I don't know how he does it. Like, I tried to do it with him, and I could not do it. I could not keep my eyes open. And that—that that, that is my big takeaway from that debate. That should tell you everything you need to know about Listen, debates yeah. ever. That's why I and, listen to it, listen to it um, next time. 
I think one of the big glaring things there, at least for probably me and Ryan, was the um, noticeable absence of Beto. And we've kind of spent some time going through all of the emotions, and um, we kind of want to do a, a bit of a postmortem, like what happened as in the in the in the campaign yeah. as, a, as a whole. Yeah, without without you know the sobbing and the tears, <laughs> if we can if we can manage that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, actually, things... Dan, I would love to get your perspective since you aren't, um, you know, you aren't really as strong of the de or a strong Beto supporter like uh, Chris and I are. How how do you view Beto's candidacy uh, from start to finish and now that it's over? I mean, I I think I said it last time. I'll try to remember what I said. Uh, but you know, I always like I like Beto. I had no, pro you know, his candidacy. I, I know he had a rocky start and has some missteps and had a reboot. Um, but I don't know, maybe it's the wrong time for him to be run for president. Uh, I don't know, maybe because I, I also part of the problem is he c couldn't get it going in this in this field. Um, I know you guys mentioned Klobuchar and Kamala, and I even Cory Booker. I think had a great performance, but these guys aren't even getting above a couple percentage points with guys and girls. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think just it's just I don't think it was the right time. Necessarily for, you know, for Beto, and, and I I think his ideas are good. You know, he's a very compassionate person. I think he's genuine in his in his feelings. I just, you know, and I'm, I was a little sad that he had to drop out. I, I did want to see what he could do going forward. You know, I, I was hoping he'd get to the caucuses and the primaries and maybe make a run. Um, I, know, I just, it's just unfortunate that this, this, this time in, in history was just a weird, it's a weird yeah. time for pretty good. Listen, I, I agree with you on Klobuchar. He is really smart. He is very witty. And I know she'll kick Trump's ass. And I know Kamika could kick, kick, kick Trump's ass. But these people aren't, are barely getting above a couple percentage points. And, and people like Buttigieg are, you know, I think Kopitar was right. If Buttigieg wasn't a, ma a man, he'd be where they are. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. But yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was a little sad. I was a little sad because I really wanted Beto to beat Cruz in uh, 18. And I did, I want to see what he could do going, you know, in this race, make a dent. And, but I think his his presence will loom. He's not going to go away. Um, you know, yeah. I, I hope he still stays out there and, and goes to, to the states that need it. And I hope he's there for in Colorado and Iowa and in Carolina, North Carolina and in South Carolina uh, to campaign for the, the candidates who run against and for the Senate. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think, um, you know, we haven't seen the last of him for, for sure. And I do think you hit the nail on the head is the personally, I think the early stumbles, um, you know, he came out of the gate hot. He came out of the gate yeah. at 12 percent. Uh, you know, everybody was begging him to run. He wasn't even he hadn't even announced and he was pulling in second place behind Joe Biden, who hadn't announced. Um, so, you know, we say the timing. He had every reason in the world to jump in. I just I think he tried to jump in and do it like he did in the Senate campaign. Um, yeah. And it's just a different beast. Uh, you know, he didn't have a campaign staff. He didn't. He, it took month before he hired a campaign manager. And by that time, the media narrative had already been set for him. Yep. Yep. Vanity Fair article. Vanity Fair article Which was came completely out. misquoted, but that's all it takes. But is a, 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 exactly. But a nimble, a nimble campaign with a good campaign staff behind you would have been able to address that, get out in front of it and, you know, twist it. Find a friendly reporter to write a counter article about it. You know, you know, there's ways to do this. And he just didn't have the staff around him to be nimble like that um, it, without the glowing press that he got in the Senate campaign. I mean, he didn't really get vetted by the press in the Senate campaign. They were pretty universally glowingly praising of him and, you know, all around just kind of ran. Yeah. And they just ran with the negatives. And, and I think that's really by time they by time he finally got he got I think he got a great staff on board. But by the time he got them on board, it was too late. Yeah. Um, and I think that's assessment. unfortunately yeah. where we're at. Just hope they learn, learn his, from his mistakes in, in eight yeah. years. Hopefully eight years, not four years, because that'll be <laughs> really bad. Uh, yeah, real, real bad. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, you know, he, maybe he gets a position in the next cabinet. Maybe it's a VP choice. Depends on who, who wins the nomination. Mm -hmm. Again, he's definitely, you know, I know it's been a sad time for a lot of the Die Hard Battle supporters, and I feel for you guys, but he's definitely not dead. Not, you're going to hear from him going forward. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt. He's, he's going to be a star in this party. Absolutely. Oh, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we and need that, him. We need him. 
Absolutely. And that, and that, you know, we talk about the low lights, um, but there are highlights too. Um, you know, that to, to, before we jump into that, I did want to mention the first debate and the, the Castro thing and that, that one hurt. Um, mm -hmm. I, I mean, it was utter bullshit, but it still hurt. And it really wasn't until the beginning of August and the, the unfortunate, I mean, just awful tragedy that took place there. Um, that, you know, he started getting noticed again, which is just absolutely awful. But, you know, it, it it's the nature of the beast, I guess, at this point, as as awful and disgusting as that is. Um, mm -hmm. But that was followed by the steak fry, uh, the debate in Houston. And I just felt like all of that was that was the peak. Right. That's when the show really started getting kind of popular and, and bigger and you got involved and just like it seemed like everything was going so well and we were we were just steadily climbing um, until the rug was pulled out from under us. And when he when he when he left. Yeah, I have a question. What is the main reason why he decided to suspend and, and stop running? Was it a money um, issue or polling issue? It is multiple things. I've heard that. He, um, he, uh, I, well, his, his, he, he his didn't, want, he, didn't it, want to he didn't want to lose staff. He didn't want yeah. to, to fire his staff or fire anybody to stay in it. But there were also other things, um, that were going on as far as like, I mean, at least rumored. This is all speculation. I've no, well, you don't have to, the you only don't have to flow speculation if you don't want to. I was just curious if there's a definitive reason. Uh, we never got a true thing. Yeah, the 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 reason given, and I mean, I kind of take his word on it, is that he was in a really in a money crunch, and he was in a yeah. position where to stay viable, um, he would have to fire staff, and he wouldn't be able to grow the way he needed to. And yeah, I could see Beto not being the type of person to be the axe man and you know cut people off. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, 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 it's a reasonable explanation. I mean, there's, you know, there's always things about, you know, were there threats against his family or were there, yeah. you know, maybe conflicts with staff or other things. And I, I don't know. I, I don't. It's I think it's possible that that stuff weighed into it because, you know, it yeah. is takes a toll on your staff and it does take a toll on your body. But and, and, I, and supporters were starting to get text messages, too. Yeah. Like I got one. Yeah. But again, that's one of those. It's going to happen. You know, like if you're going to be it's in, inevitable, like, like, Especially like you go, when you go into doing. this, you go into this with that expectation that that's going to happen. So yeah. I, I, I do trust, I, I trust him, uh, you know, that if that the money issue is there, I really have no reason to doubt that. And it's a good enough explanation for me. And that works for me too. I haven't really yeah. thought too much on it since then. And yeah. I haven't actually been as active as i was i've kind of enjoyed the little bit of a break that ryan and i have taken right <laughs> but luckily for us politics didn't and uh nope. so congress continued now congress continued <laughs> last they persisted. Um, to make donald trump <laughs> looks like the biggest fucking dumbass on the planet i, I just like uh. it's Dan, this is how we ended up with Dan the whole show is because he was going to come on for impeachment and you know we we talk we're going to talk about the debate and he's on that team so we just yeah. kept him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, no why comment. not? Well, and I, and I don't want to remind people, but I did send a tweet out. I'm like an hour later. I got a call from Chris that I did not want to receive that Beto did did drop out. So uh, don't please don't blame me. Yeah, <laughs> I re I re I remember that we had a conversation we about did. that. Jesus, like you, like I said, I was at work and then I I had I was I had a cover of class and I was writing down notes and I said before I left I wrote it out, and then like two hours later you call me I was at some a family member's house and you're like, you were pretty upset so yeah, I don't want to dive back in the past but yeah don't blame me please <laughs> yeah it should suck don't worry <laughs> um, but so so like what's happened we've had public um public hearings since then Vinman has testified publicly um Sondland blew their entire fucking show up um mm -hmm. i mean all of it they thought he was going to come out and be on their side he caught devin nunez um you the uh the apparently ukrainian Ooh. poster boy Move. Yeah, <laughs> caught him flat-footed. Well, I mean, as far as uh, we know, the public hearings are over for the intelligence committee. 
but they start next this week judicial. for the judiciary. My, my good New York buddy Jerry Nadler will take that over. Um, yep. But this, yep. I think we're very lucky, and I guess we're getting more details. Just we have some really good uh, uh, leaders of the, these committees. That Adam Schiff just you know did a fantastic, phenomenal job. Oh yeah! Uh, if oh you don't God, watch like, anything oh, else, just watch his summaries at the end. They, they're they're yeah. really good. Like it's just like I'm just, it's a proud fellow Jew. I'm very uh, Mr. Schiff, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but like it's just. This is great, you know. Just the way he, like, the witnesses lined up, you know, he in a perfect order. Um, and again, again, the statements were fantastic. Or just, mm -hmm. just for, you know, thank, I thank God we won the house back in eighteen. Oh, All right, yeah. you know, this banana republic would be off the freaking uh, at the edge of the ocean at this point. Yeah, but, but, you know, Jesus. But, but was, well, and and <laughs> to that point, right? Um, Schiff has done a really good job, but he's also given the Republicans nothing to yes. work with, regardless of what they may tell oh. you. They've had to change their story every single day. Oh, yeah. I, oh, totally. And you listen into the – I actually had the misfortune of listening into uh, Rush Limbaugh for oh. a little bit. <laughs> oh, dear God. <laughs> and, was that, yeah, it was pretty bad. You but you know, masochist. Were you confused? It was, Come on. <laughs> Yeah, it was. I had a, a long story. I had. I have a rental car right now. When I got in it, that was what the station that was on. Um, <laughs> you just but, couldn't change it. <laughs> yeah, but it, the 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 mantra is not an impeachable offense. Not an impeachable. There's nothing impeachable here. There's nothing impeachable here. Now let's go after the whistleblower. That's all they have is just or you know it. deny, 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 deny. Attack the whistleblower. Or you know you they they have it. no legitimate refutation of any of this and that's really what's great about these hearings is you know it, it's shutting down all the plausible and ideability that you know you really just have to be straight up drinking the kool-aid in order to keep up with this on the yeah, republicans and they, and they very much push the like they push they are bold faced lying to people it's just absolutely crazy and that brings us to uh mr nunez himself mm -hmm. dan you want to talk about it well he's a clown <laughs> yes. No, well, yes, he, he is. He spent, you know, it's just really annoying that I, 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 he can get away with what he does. You know, he for the first couple of years he would run interference on the Mueller report to Trump, and now he's basically up on this podium spouting out conspiracy theories and lies that are being debunked turns by out. witnesses. And he also was part of the uh, smear campaign, uh, thanks to my other good buddy, Mr. Parnas, at a Hanukkah party was basically sent on a mission to find information and he was part of this deal uh nunez which is an incredible i'm a, i'm no lawyer but an incredible conflict of interest that he's up there running uh, the lead and the republican side in this inquiry and he's had might have a being uh implicated in it, in it and i just don't understand here's what i want to happen with that i want them to sit down which isn't going to happen anymore with nobody in the room and then serve devin nunez with a subpoena <laughs> <laughs> well, he wouldn't show up. He would. Well, he'd fight it. He, in he court. would. He wouldn't show <laughs> up. It, it's another thing. We need to get a lawyer on this because I don't understand why subpoenas suddenly have no, no impact. Well, they don't. You saw the court ruling today. Uh, the judge threw out. Uh, I think it was the White House counsel was uh, uh, refusing to comply with the subpoena, and the judge today threw it out. The case said, "No, you have to comply." In yeah. direct quote, said yeah. that Trump, it, the president, is not a king. You know, no, he's not. And that's like, the biggest problem. You have here. to comply with the law here. So what? Why? So that me? Wait, wait. No, that's sorry. the one that had been saying that. Uh, I think it happened that, last night. That that yeah. that could happen. Well, I know they got McGann. McGann has to testify. Yeah. Right. This that was, other guy. That was that judge. This other guy is going to impact Bolton because mm -hmm. that case is going to impact that. So we may see him. In the judiciary. Oh okay. yeah, and by the way, in the middle of all this, uh, apparently Giuliani's associate is dropping all kinds of evidence against Giuliani. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they have him like they have like nine <laughs> different charges, like right. conspiracy to defraud I mean, America. I think he has um, and he has receipts, Parnas. Yeah, audio yeah. and. and I, and I, I, I heard this on CNN this morning. Um, the lawyer who was on there, they said that, yeah, Giuliani's team came out and said they haven't even contacted us. And the lawyer said, and that's bad. That's real bad. Like, you want them contacting you. If they're not contacting you, you're, you're, you've got a problem. Oh, right. Like, oh, like I cut a deal or something? They don't need you. <laughs> they don't, they don't <laughs> make you. The, they're they're going, making you the case the without you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he, you are the target. As I say, I'm a lawyer, but they're probably going to indict him. 
and then say, mm-hmm. we don't, you give us about the president and we'll t- cut a deal. And, and he looks like he's primed to flip. He already oh, looks yeah. like he's primed to flip. You know, I said it before, what is, what is his, what is his deal here? What has he gained to, to gain to, to, to end a gain from helping Trump out? Relevancy. Well, he but had he, nothing yeah. before this. Could commit crimes to, for, for this guy who's not going to help you, who's never helped anybody, who's you know, there are people sitting in jail right now who helped Trump out. You're not a dumb, you're not that dumb, Rudy. He, he might is. Be, like, maybe he is. Maybe. <laughs> I said he it got, last time. Like, <laughs> I mean, do we have to bring up the fact that Trump and Giuliani did uh, drag together in that video? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, and I, one of my buddies brought this up. Like, um, he said, I mean, I just don't understand what happened to Giuliani. He seemed like such a good guy. He, he seemed like such a good guy because he was the mayor when 9-11 happened and yeah. it completely erased the fact that he like cheated on his wife with his cousin, um, was just really phenomenally bad at his job, all sorts of shit. Like he was, also a, o- completely overshadows the fact that he really did, bu- uh, bungle the response to 9-11. There's a lot of firefighters who are very injured because of him. And some of his decisions, <laughs> That's, you know, he he just got this media presence about him that they, they they got this narrative that is just completely undeserved. Well, the crazy eyes thing he does, <laughs> where he like looks down and his eyes get real big. He he does that in normal conversation. I know that because um, he was in an episode of America: The Story of Us, and I was watching it with my class today, uh-huh. which. Um, I have to settle down anytime Donald Trump comes on. <laughs> settle them down, settle yourself down. It's pretty bad when sixth graders know that you are awful. <laughs> what kind of? I, I'm taking it. You must. Uh, what, what What are the parents like of your students? <laughs> I, I never. None of us ever talk politics. <laughs> Like politics is very, very shunned at school. Like yeah. I'll tell them when things are happening. Like I'll give extra credit if they go vote. And like with the impeachment, I'll tell them what's going on. Yeah, I do that too. Mm-hmm. And I tell them to kind of watch the news, but I try to be unbiased be- and while I'm thinking they say stuff, and I have to be like, be like, no, da 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 da. All I'm thinking in my head is, fuck yeah, fuck that motherfucker. He's a giant piece of shit. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, one thing but I can't Rudy. verbalize that to uh, small children mm. in my care, yeah. so I don't. You can't do that. Um, but one other thing about it's... Rudy before we go on, I, he's also like the dumbest criminal ever. You know, he butt really dialing is. reporters, texting them, you know, showing his phone on the air. Like, how seriously? I'm who could be that dumb. Well, Trump's starting to try to to pull yes, the put it, yeah. distance between him. He said that he didn't know what Rudy was doing in Ukraine, regardless of the fact that we have fucking evidence. Yeah. Let's <laughs> say he was. Yeah, we have like I don't understand. Like how, who testimony. does he think he's kidding? Testimony saying that Rudy was in charge based on what Trump wanted. Yeah, yeah I, I just, don't understand. Yeah. Like I just it all blows my mind. The whole thing with the subpoenas. Um, and I and I they that we talked about this, but. The only power that Congress has is, you know, the set, to send out the sergeant of arms. That's really, from what I understand, an honorary position. <laughs> but fucking do that shit. <laughs> Bust a, up in the attorney general's office and arrest that motherfucker well, if you I, have to. I would. Yeah, I mean, the, it, yeah. or Mick Mulvaney. I, I just, I, I was using this uh, the the attorney general. I mean, he's probably a criminal too. Let's be serious. Um, but no um, he's like he would be like the head of the law that I can think of. Oh, well, it's a problem on that, that the top law enforcement official in the land is basically Trump's right hand man. Mm-hmm. That's a big, implicated that's a big, in all of this. That's a big. That's a big problem yep. that you know he's able to. Who, and who knows what else Trump's done that we don't know about? You know, they got covered up. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's this. It'll all come out eventually. Like that's what they don't understand is somebody's going to get become president next. And they're going to go back and look at this. And when they look at this, they're going to find something that is just absolutely disgusting. Honestly, if I'm mm-hmm. Trump, I am I am going and getting myself. I am resi- I'm, I'm pulling this people Agnew. I'm resigning, and I want to get a uh, full a full pardon, and full immunity. Because he's done some between the Stormy Daniels stuff and this and the Ukraine and whatever else we don't know about. You know, yeah. And they're and they're currently interviewing David Pecker in uh, uh, New York uh, about yep. what any any issue that the high money payment. Those are those are crimes. Yeah, they those are, don't go yeah. away. <laughs> there's there's statute of limitations, but it's not that you know. It's it it's been recent. Yeah, and it's just and ongoing. I, I, 
it makes me sad because back in like I, I kids used to look up to the president, right? Like yeah. the president was the one person you could trust. No. And I wouldn't trust Donald Trump to give me yeah. a glass of water. Now he's the <laughs> alpha male you have to look up to. <laughs> That's their theory is that he's basically like some kind of weird alpha male. Like, I don't know how you could look at Trump and think there's anything alpha about him. I have no idea. Yeah. Fucking Rick Perry said he was the chosen one. Oh, God. Oh, Good God. God. I'm, sorry. Let's, let's, I'm sorry that Texas inflicted that on the rest of the country. It's, uh, listen, listen, it's bad. He, he's a real ass bag. Um, let's flip. Let's go. Before we move on, because we have a we have a segment with John. We're going to plug in um, on the Paris Climate Agreement. Let's talk about Sondland. Sondland pretty much rolled everybody under the bus. Oh, like he hit them like a fucking Mack truck. Pence, oh, um, everybody. He every Pompeo, Perry, all of them. Trump, Rudy. Trump, yeah, Rudy, Just, all of them. Yeah, it, it blatantly obvious that you know. No, he's the basically the one who said no. This really was what it was all about. I think that, I think everybody had been waiting for someone to sit in the witness chair and actually say the words, and he mm -hmm. finally said it. And the fact that it's the ambassador to Ukraine who said it, and not like this is some like they can't spin it as this is some kind of deep state lackey or Aunt never Trumper. This is a guy who donated a million dollars to the President Trump's inaugural committee, like. He and that's money that's missing. Hannah brought that up the other day. Like that, they don't know where that money went. <laughs> probably the Trump, uh, it was, probably it, the Trump the, organization. The, oh, most likely it was probably laundered. The this entire presidency is it's one big money laundering mm -hmm. um, fiasco. I'm telling you, it's a heist. Is what it is. They mm -hmm. they the, they found the best way to launder money, and that has become president of the United States. And they're making money hand over fist. Yeah. yeah. And they're, they're, yeah. They're, I mean, they're basically trying to investigate Joe Biden and his son for nothing. And meanwhile, Ivanka and Jared and Don Jr. are making a shitload of money. I, and uh, that shit drives me crazy, too. Can't stand Donald Trump Jr. He got booed at a conservative event trying to sell his book. Oh, Florida, his book right, was yeah. a. His Thank you, Florida. Has the, <laughs> say what? <laughs> It, it got on the number one bestseller because the RNC bought like a th hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand. It has an asterisk. Don't buy that. It has an asterisk. That's sad. Uh, that 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 is mind blowing. That it's is, a freaking. That is very ugh. sad. But uh, before uh, b before we sign out, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bring John on to talk about the Paris Climate Agreement. So we're gonna go ahead and bring John back on, and uh, John. Just backed out of the Paris Agreement, uh, the Paris Climate Agreement, for the more specific. Explain to us why that's such a big deal. Yeah. So for those who don't know, we submitted our notice as the as a country, the United States of America submitted its notice to the UN or whomever that we are officially backing out of the Paris Agreement on climate change. This is something that we've known was coming for a while, and for you know years we've been ignoring the tenets of the Paris Agreement. But this is a symbolic gesture that indicates the U.S. government doesn't care about fighting climate change. Particularly the Trump administration doesn't care about fighting climate change. We might see, you know, a series of like other countries backing out as they decide, you know what, if the U.S. isn't going to even formally bother to pretend to fight climate change, then we won't either. Little things like that. Yeah, it, it, it sets a bad precedent especially with the U.S. being such a, or supposedly a leader in the world. Granted, we've been fucking that shit up royally as of late. <laughs> like, you know, uh, hashtag Ukraine. Yep. Um, I mean, just things haven't been, been going well, but as, as a nation, the U.S. has been really the leader of the world since World War II. Yeah. And like, to back out of something like this, like, tell, tell us, what was the Paris Agreement it's supposed to do? What, is, what was the point? Why did they join? Why yeah. did they create it? So this, after you know, decades of inaction, the UN convened everybody and with the US's leadership, like Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and John Kerry and all these people had been trying for years to get this in the works. Uh, fast forward to like 2015, they say, okay, we've convened all the nations of the world, 
and we want you not to completely get rid of carbon, just to limit your emissions a little bit. That way, we'll keep the global average temperature rise below 2 degrees Celsius. It's like the least ambitious goal ever, but it's the most they could get everyone to agree on. And the idea was each country will get their own plans in order to report on how much carbon they're putting into the air and figure out like how they're going to decrease it in the future. It's not hard. I mean, let's be real, any major uh, industrial change is going to be hard, but compared to some of the more ambitious plans we're seeing today, this was supposed to be like easy, something we could, ev like, we could get everyone to agree on. And, well, that didn't go so well. Well, I mean, like you said, we, we, they started doing it in 2015. By, what, 2017, uh, the Trump administration had, had pulled this out. And hearing you talk about it, it makes more sense because Donald Trump is, I don't think it has anything to do with climate change or his belief in climate change. He just wanted to literally undo absolutely everything that Obama did, which is just absolutely ridiculous in and of itself. And I will go ahead and point out that we do still have Obamacare regardless of Donald Trump's best efforts. Yeah. They campaigned on that shit. We also don't have a wall, so they can go fuck themselves with that, too. I mean, yeah, we have parts of a wall that he's claiming is a victory, but whatever. I mean, we've but seen this with the Iran wall, by the way, are their repairs. They're, like, yeah. They're replacing wall that was already there. Yeah. So, you know, that just goes to show you that maybe the Trump administration isn't very good at their jobs. But, you know, we've seen this with the Iran nuclear deal. Uh, Trump backs out of it after, you know, waffling on it for like a year, then says we're going to negotiate a new deal that says Iran will not build a nuke in the next 10 years or so or something like that. And then people were like, wait a second, you just backed out of the deal that did that. Why? And, you know, the only real explanation is because Obama did the first one. With climate change, it's like he hates international agreements, he hates Obama, and he doesn't believe in climate change and all his donors don't believe in climate change. So it's like, he has even more reason in his warped mind to get rid of this thing. It's like absolutely the worst thing that he can think of. It's the worst thing that happened, I guess, would, to happen to him. Obama came up with it. He can't say he has to do with climate change, and like, so fuck it, right? Yeah. Like, he's old, he's in his 70s. He's, he's not gonna have to deal with climate change. He's a Let's boomer. As much money as possible. I th and I think that's mostly what the, a, a lot of the people who don't believe in climate change that's that's where they have their mindset. There's honestly there is really no difference between somebody who doesn't believe in climate change and somebody who believes that the earth is flat. Yeah. They're the same people. Yeah. I mean like I'm, I'm convinced they are. Yeah. I mean I'm I'm sure that there are people who I'm sure there's overlap and I'm sure there's people who believe in one not the other, but the, the main point remains that they're not really keen on science and learning and caring about things. You know, like the flat earthers believe there's a giant conspiracy among all scientists and all airplanes and every aspect of society to hide the fact that the earth is flat, whereas climate change deniers think that every scientist has gotten together and independently found that climate change is bunk, yet they all pretend that it's real. It's just bonkers. And, well, we will pay. I should also note, for context, that with the Trump administration's withdrawal from the Paris Agreement, there's only like two other countries that are with us on this. One of them is somewhere in Central America, I believe Nicaragua or something, or I don't know. But one of the countries has already decarbonized as much as possible, and they're saying the Paris Agreement is unnecessary. Uh, therefore, they didn't even need to join. The other is Syria, which, you know, we're in good company. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, don't, I, I didn't know about the, the Central American country, but I mean, if they're already way ahead of the curve, I feel like the joining the pair, I mean, the, joining the Paris Agreement for them would have been symbolic, but it sounds like they would, were actually doing what they needed to do anyways. And then there's Syria, and they kind of have more important things to worry about right now. Yeah, they're in the middle of a, you know, giant civil war. Although, you know, that civil war was caused in part by climate change induced droughts. We had a lot of farmers lose their livelihoods, move into the cities without real good jobs. That sparked more unrest, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they're feeling the brunt of it, just as we are, just as everyone else is. And uh, by the way, uh, Nicaragua re-entered, or it, it decided later on it wanted to enter the Paris Agreement, just for symbolism's sake. So we're completely alone with Syria. Yeah. 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 Uh, such tried, is life. As hard as we tried to leave them. 
God, I hate that. I just can't stand pretty much anything the Trump administration does. Yeah. Um, this, it, it, and it, and it, it's got generational, generational damage is being done. Um, I'm 33. Yeah. Right? I'm, I'm going to see the damage that um, climate change does. I'm probably like, what, like 10, 12 years older than you? Uh, yeah, like I'm 21. That something like oh, along those lines so yeah. you will feel it worse yeah but not that much worse we're both we're both like neck Pretty deep much. in shit right now yeah well and and, and then to, to take it a step further my son is one yeah right I, I i can tell you he does not want to live on mars as much as he has watched snoopy in space yeah not something he's jazzed about yeah so, i, I mean, mean who knows maybe he'll want to move to mars in the future but you know even if you colonize it yeah <laughs> I mean, we if we want to do an episode about colonizing Mars, I could go on for hours about this, but the short answer is it would take us a really long time. Yeah, it's it's not happening anytime soon. But I think really the the, the reason that we brought John back on and, and we're going to keep bringing Jack, John back on is because climate change is so important. So we're going to keep keep you guys updated with things that are going on. Mm -hmm. And pulling out of the Paris Agreement was a big fucking deal. Yeah. It's, it's, gonna, it's we're gonna feel the effects of this. It's the depressing. Trump administration is doing irreparable damage, not just to the environment, but our standing internationally and domestically. Yeah, this is one of many things that he has done just to you know stick a I don't know how to describe it stick a wrench in the works of the entire Atlantic order, where you know the U.S. and Europe have been leading the way on this. That's gone now. It'll oh, take absolutely. us, yeah. It'll take us decades to rebuild trust with, you know, the rest of the world, with the Kurds in particular, with the Canadians. So, yep. yippee! Right. Yeah. And, you know, there's a really only one place that benefits from all the things that the Trump uh, administration is doing. Yeah. There's a lot of comrades out there. Yeah, I'm just thinking, you know, there's a country that begins with R and ends with Usha that yeah, really right. likes what we're doing. Although, they'll get hit hard by climate change, too. It's just a matter of, you know, oh, they absolutely. will geopolitically benefit at the same time that their country burns. Right, yeah. I mean, they've got Siberia, right? If Siberia is... is, is okay. <laughs> tropical, we, we do it, all right? Yeah, yeah, although, you know, a lot of the forests in Russia are burning to the ground, so that's not great. Right. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. All right. Fun. I, I feel like I've said ugh, all, a lot in this conversation. Well, it, it's a, it's very succinct, you know. Everyone knows what you mean by ugh. It's just, ugh. Yeah. But anyway, thanks for coming back on, man. We really appreciate it. We definitely want you to, to keep us updated on what's going on with climate change because it is so important. And with, um, with Neto having left the 2020 race, um, we want to make sure we, we carry on with some of his ideals and make sure we be. Yes, Beto forever means Beto forever. Damn fucking straight. Thanks, John. Absolutely. So thank you for to John. John comes on and does climate change for us because you know I don't know much about it. Um, I know it's bad um, and that <laughs> we need to do something about it. I do also know that the noise from windmills does not cause cancer. <laughs> because you know i'm a not a fucking <laughs> half idiot a half a brain his dumb ass cards written in fucking sharpie what kind of moron you know, <sighs> i can't even came out today too that he, that he knew about the quick pro crow whistleblower and then gave the money to ukraine so that's why i saw yeah. him at first said there was he didn't want quick pro crow put i can't yeah. talk right now you get it <laughs> yeah it, it, yeah yeah no it, it was just uh it was just fucking random he he the, there was no context for him to not for him to be saying no quid pro quo mm -hmm. it's just ridiculous but anyways dan thank you for hanging out with us this whole time it's actually kind of fun to do it this way yeah. um yeah you know it's been a minute since we've, since we've done the show the next show that we have we have um plug it plug it ryan plug, oh yeah uh, i got an interview in. with uh ronda hart so we'll be bringing her on, um, Santa Fe shooting survivor and uh, gun rights activist. Or, sorry, she's not a survivor. Her daughter died in the Santa Fe shooting. So, but we got her on, and uh, yeah, we had a great conversation. So, next episode, stay tuned. Yep. 
Uh, absolutely. Um, and as always, find some kind of um, thing to donate to. What are you doing? Somebody's making a grinding noise. Are you are you sanding something? Which one of you is in woodshop, Dan? <laughs> really? You play? You play with the Jew? Come on. Do you have a, do you have a... <laughs> God, you sound like Fran Drescher with a cold. Oh my. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, as I was saying, um, find some kind of cause and donate it to. There's plenty of really good causes they're, out there. Keep volunteering. Keep, you know, keeping the spirit of Beto alive. Betoism, it's a thing. We're going to make it a thing. Um, and uh, until then, we're going to keep on looking ahead to Beto days. <laughs>